Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. It's great to have each and every one of you joining us here online today. Some announcements as we get started. Uh, we'd appreciate if you would uh, comment below and let us know that you were with us today, uh, whether you're watching it here on the first run or if you're watching it later in the week. Just good to know who's all worshiped with us through the week and uh, we can say hello to each other and interact that way. So we hope that you take that opportunity uh, right now or later in the service to make those comments. A few activities that are happening uh, online uh, to keep us connected. On Tuesdays at 3 o'clock, I'm offering a coffee with the pastor online. Uh, we're using Zoom for these meetings. That information is found in our newsletter, uh, as well as posted each week on our Facebook page. So please be on the lookout for that and join us at 3 o'clock on Tuesdays. Uh, grab a cup of coffee or mother beverage, and uh, we'll be in conversation and prayer with one another. On Wednesdays at 6.30, I'll be offering a Bible study. We've had two weeks of it already. Uh, each week has a different topic uh, for us to discuss and get, dive into Scripture. Uh, you don't have to have attended a previous week to join us, so you can make this your first week, and we'd love to have you. Uh, that's also on Zoom. That information is on our Facebook page and in our newsletter and also on our website. The May-June uh, Upper Room issue is available online. If you're not able to get a copy of it, um, you can uh, find that login information on our uh, newsletter, and we'll post it here on our Facebook page again this week so that you can uh, access that and use it for your daily devotions. We're also offering a weekly uh, children's lesson for our families to use uh, through our Kids Zone newsletter. It's a separate newsletter from our main one, and you can sign up for that uh, on the Children and Youth Facebook page, or you can find that information in our newsletter. We'd love for you to be on our mailing list for that. Uh, we will be continuing doing that through the summer uh, for our kids to have an activity to do with the family. It includes music videos and a lesson video and some scripture to read, and a prayer to do, and some weekly activities. So we hope that you take advantage of this and, and do that as a family. We also, through all this, have added uh, online giving as an option for you. Uh, that uh, information is posted in the comments below. I post it every week, the link. It's also available on our website and through our newsletter. Um, you can give through a, a program called Tithely. It's a secure uh, portal for us to give. You can give through a debit or credit card as well as a bank draft. So that is an opportunity for you to give if you are not able to get your offering into the church or want to help us support our ministry during this time. I'm going to give you a brief announcement. More details will be coming about it. Uh, the church council met on Thursday evening to talk about uh, coming back to worship in person in our building. Uh, we, we discussed quite a bit of options and have set on a target date to join back in worship of June 21st. So Sunday, June 21st. Uh, is our target date to reopen the building and join for worship. There's lots of things that go uh, into making that possible. Um, we are working on a draft of, of our procedures and what we'll do to make sure we're all safe while we do that. Uh, be on the lookout next week for a letter from me uh, that will be distributed by mail as well as uh, through our email newsletter. And it'll be posted on our website as well. And then we'll have a, a final document that will explain procedures and just how we're going to do things when we come back. It'll be a little different than when we we last met in March, but it'll be good to be back together. So please be on the lookout for that here in the coming week. If you have any questions about that, uh, please reach out to me, and I'll be more than willing to talk to you about it. Let us now turn our whole selves towards worshiping our God and beginning with this call to worship. The Lord is our refuge. We can find peace in God's abiding love. When troubles assail us, we call upon the Lord. When joys abound, we call upon the Lord. Welcome this day to God's house. No matter where you're worshiping from, it is one of many dwellings of the Almighty One. We thank you and praise you, God, for His refuge and sanctuary. Amen. to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace.
beauty of the sun, the one who died for me. We die for us, church. You believe it tonight? Come on, let's sing together. Hallelujah, 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 all praise to our God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Simply come Longing just to breathe Something that's a word That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's not about me.
Now is our time for our young disciples. I hope the kids will gather around the screen to join us in this time. Hi kids, how are you today? I'm going to talk about directions today. And you'll see here on the screen a, a compass that shows us the different directions. It's north and south, east and west. It can also look as arrows of up, down, left, right. And when we need to figure out directions, we give them that way. Whether we say to go left or right, up, down, we can say north, south, east or west. And they help us get to our destination. But in our spiritual lives, our destination is God. To be with God and, and dwell with God in God's house. And so we learn in today's scripture lesson that Jesus tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And what that means for us is we can look to Jesus to point the way in which we're supposed to live our lives. How we need to act with, towards one another. How we need to care for one another. How we need to honor our, our families and, and everyone in God's creation. So at any time in life we're not sure what to do, we can always turn to Jesus through prayer, through reading of the Bible, through our Sunday school lessons, through our Wednesday night program. All these show us the way through Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Will you guys pray with me? Dear God, help us keep our eyes on Jesus because we know that he is the way, the only way to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us, kids. Now our offering song today is I Surrender All. During this time of offering, I encourage you just to pause and, and listen to the words and take in the message and ponder what it means for us to surrender all to our God.
Our first scripture lesson for today is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. And our gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of John in the 14th chapter, starting in verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And then Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe in me that I am the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me anything, I will do it. I've entitled today's message, The Journey, as I think about what life really is for us. Life is a journey in which we have ups and downs, we have unexpected curves and turns. We find ourselves in uncertain times, Not just now, but all throughout our lives. Things that rock our faith. Things that make us unsure of what's next. We long for normalcy, whatever that word means to you. We long to be back in community with one another. We long to have more control over our lives than we do right now. These are all the emotions that we're going through during these times as we stay at home and try to isolate from each other as we find different ways to fill the voids that we find in our lives. One way we do that is to worship online together, engage in Bible study online, to be in prayer for one another, maybe reaching out to those we care about more than we used to, connecting through technology, whether it be phones or videos, but making sure that we find something to fill that void. And really, that's our lifelong journey, not just now, but going forward. We need to find ways to connect with each other and with God. And they may not always be the same way. They may not always be easy. But that is our task before us today. This passage from John is one that I preach from numerous times a year. I would say on average somewhere between 12 and 20 times a year, I I have this passage come up one way or another. Because we usually read this passage and and the verses that follow during a a funeral, a time when we come to mourn together. And we don't read it because it's a sad passage that makes us release our emotions, but it is the passage of hope. Hope for a new possibility. Hope that we may be able to go on to something better and greater than us. Jesus is talking to his disciples in his last days. He is telling them that he's not going to be with them much longer that he is going to depart from them, and that their way of doing things is going to be different. They had relied on Jesus for so much. He guided their their travels. He taught them. He challenged them. He became their safe place. They knew that as long as they could physically follow Jesus, they were okay. But a time was coming where that was going to be changed. He was trying to warn them that you better prepare for something different. But in the midst of it, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Because you should believe in God and believe also in me. 
He tells us that his father's house has many dwelling places and he's going to prepare a place for us. That Jesus is thinking about us even when he's not with us. Even when we're not together with him in person, he's telling us that he is going to prepare a place for us. Now Thomas, the great questioner of history, says, But Lord, we don't know where you're going. We have no possibility of knowing where you're going. How can we get there? And he says, You know the way, because I am the way, the truth, and the life. That if you have listened to me all this time, you have heard the Father, and you know where I was pointing to. Philip says, But show us the Father so we can be sure. And he says, if you have any faith, you've already seen the Father. So in these days where we find ourselves sometimes lost, we need to cling to these words that we know the way, the truth, and the life, that our relationship with Christ is, is more than we need. You see, no matter where we find ourselves on this journey, God is walking alongside us, guiding us, strengthening us. We have a promise from Christ here in the 14th chapter of John. That says, cling to me. You know the way. Even when I'm not physically with you and you can't see me, I'm here guiding you and strengthening you. We're told later in this chapter that the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will be sent in Jesus' name to remind us of all that he has taught us. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. A powerful message. We hear those words throughout Scripture. Do not be afraid. It's easier said than done. The uncertainty before us, not knowing what's next, not knowing if we'll get back to opening stuff up and meeting together, and then another wave will hit, and we'll have to go back into separating from one another. How do we protect each other? How do we also have faith that God is with us and that God is calling us to something? I think the one thing that's been evident to me through this is that the church is more than the building and more than the individuals who gather. That we collectively are the church wherever we are. That we are stronger than the sum of our parts. That we will come out on the other side of of this crazy time, stronger and more committed. One thing I know for sure, the church will not look the same as it did the first couple weeks of March. And that might not be a bad thing. We may be more focused on our mission. We may be more worried about caring for one another and reaching out to people. We may now know that we need the message of of the good news of Christ more than ever. And that is what Jesus tells Philip and the other disciples that he will continue to do the works through them. That all they need to do is turn and ask for Jesus to be a part of it, and he will be there to do it. So that's where we should be at this point. We should be praying daily that Christ will be present in our lives, that Christ will guide us and do great works for the ministry of our church and all of our churches in this town that we may reach people for Christ in new and exciting ways, that we cling to that hope even when we're not sure. Because the disciples were completely unsure of what Jesus was talking about. They asked questions and said, what do you mean we're going to follow you? We don't know where we're going. And Philip says, but show us the Father so we can be certain. And he says, you have to have faith and trust. If we hold that faith and that trust, God will do amazing things in our lives. We're hurting, we're scared, we're angry. We want answers, we want blame. We want things to get better quickly. But just like our faith life, everything in life is a journey. A journey in which we sometimes take steps forward and steps back. Sometimes steps side to side. Not knowing where to go, looking at compasses that guide us in different ways. Instead of knowing that the way, the truth, and the life is in Jesus Christ. So let that be our guiding force as we go forward. Let us pray daily for God's message to be clear, for our leadership in the church and our communities to be guided by the wisdom of God. 
and that we can remain safe in his arms and safe with health, good health, and great community. So let us realize that we are the messengers that Jesus talks about in the end of this passage today. That he tells us that he will continue to do great works in the world even though he's not physically present. As long as we ask and turn to him, may it be so. Amen. Life can bring us storms. Those moments where we wander, wonder, doubt. The journey doesn't stop, but the progress does. It can be lonely, painful. Sometimes we try to stare it down as if we could somehow will it to go away or we think we can go toe to toe and come out the other side, unscathed. We often forget just how small we are. The truth is, storms are inevitable, but when they appear, we have a protector, a savior who knows a thing or two about calming storms. A God who is a stronghold in times of trouble. In our weakness, He is strong. In our fear, He is courage. In our desperation, He is peace. Yes, storms are inevitable. But our God is invincible. Now is our time to be in prayer with and for one another as God's people. We have our prayer requests up on the screen that you can lift up in prayer today, but also remember to keep in prayer uh, throughout the week. Uh, pray each day for the different situations and people that are listed on our prayer list. Let us turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, on this day of the festival of the Christian home, the celebration of Mother's Day, the witness to the eternal love of Christ, remind us, that we are responsible for caring for each other. We are called to lift up rather than to tear down, to support rather than abandon, to reach out when others have turned away. Give us hearts of love that in all places and times we may be a witness to the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. Holy One, we come together this day celebrating the role that mothers of all types have played in our lives. We thank you for the present love and memories of those who have cared for us. Open our hearts continually to your love through others. Keep us mindful of those whom this is a difficult day. Help us to reach out to them. Jesus reminded his disciples that they always have a place in his heart, and there is a special place for them in God's realm. We lift up these prayers in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as we end this online worship, receive this blessing. Always remember who and whose you are, that you are God's people, that you were created in God's image, that you were fashioned in God's love, to be co-creators of a new world, transformed through the risen Christ. Let us live in peace. Amen.